Hi everyone, my name is Julia Graff and today I am going to draw my life for you. So I really hope you enjoy and maybe learn a few more things about who I am. I was born on April 27th in Nuremberg, Germany to my Swiss mother Elizabeth and my German father Werner. I was the second child for my parents. My sister Anna had preceded me three years earlier. My earliest memories were growing up in an idyllic, tiny village named Rittershof in the countryside of southern Germany, also known as Bavaria. My father worked in his family's business and I was lucky enough as a child to have my mom around to care for my sister and I full time. My parents rented this adorable tiny heritage house that looked straight out of a German fairy tale with a brown picket fence and I vividly remember my mom's beautiful flower garden in front. Our village was only one short street with a few houses dotting the fields on either side. My sister and I grew up surrounded by a small but very close-knit group of kids all around the same age. We all played together in the fields and the forest by the creek running behind our house or we would make up stories to play in one of our houses. I remember my childhood as being very carefree and spending a lot of time outside. When I was about six years old, my parents had finally saved up enough money to build their first house, just down the street a little bit. I was so excited while our house was being constructed, it looked so huge to me as a little kid. It was even going to have an indoor pool. When the house was finally completed, we moved in. It seemed too good to be true. I felt so lucky to be able to live in such a nice house. Basically, I was a very happy child. I loved our close-knit community in our village, my best friends from school, and all the kids in our neighborhood. I even loved to go to school in the neighboring town. I was just starting second grade when my parents dropped a bombshell on my sister and I. We were moving. We were moving far away to another country, a country I had never heard of. It was called Canada. I don't think I realized what that meant at all. I didn't even know where this place called Canada was. I remember thinking, why are we leaving? We just got here. We don't have to go anywhere. We have a home. I was very confused. Well, the reason for the move was that my father wanted to start his own clothing company business and he felt there were more opportunities in Canada for young entrepreneurs than in Germany. I hated my parents then and I told them I was not going. I told them I was going to live with grandma and stay in Germany and they could just leave without me for all I cared. It was an awful period of my young life. But then the inevitable day came when the moving truck arrived and the movers packed all our belongings into boxes and then into a gigantic container. My parents had sold their beloved house and my mom sold a lot of our toys, clothes and things we didn't use or need anymore. At that point everything happened so fast and the next thing I knew we were in Vancouver. I was still really sad by the time we moved into our new house and missing all my friends so much. But soon it was time to start school in this foreign place and I was so scared. I learned that my sister and I were going to be attending different schools because, well, she was older and she had to be placed in an ESL class, which is English as a second language. And since I was only eight years old then, I was just going to be integrated into a regular third grade classroom, right along with all the other Canadian kids. I wasn't even going to have my sister Anna beside me for support. My first day of school was terrible. I cried a lot and again hated my parents for uprooting me and throwing me into this foreign environment. But I somehow put on a brave face and managed to get through the first day. I didn't understand anyone but luckily I sat next to a Canadian girl named Leah and somehow we became close friends. I finally had my first friend in Canada. But it wasn't all easy. Since I didn't speak English and was still learning, I was ostracized by my classmates. I was the foreigner. I wasn't like the rest of them. I remember spending a lot of lunch times and recesses alone. Besides Leah, I didn't have any other friends.
Somehow things got easier over time. And after third grade, I was fluent in English and didn't have to go to special language classes anymore. I made a lot of friends in school and I was no longer the outsider. I was really good in school and actually English and art classes became my favorite and best subjects. I read a lot of books even back then and I became not only proficient in English but actually better than a lot of my classmates. I was pulling A's in English and began to write my own stories in my free time. A few years later, I along with my family was neutralized and attained Canadian citizenship. I was now a proud Canadian. I was happy to no longer be the foreigner. I finally felt like I really belonged. In Vancouver, high school began in 8th grade and I remember the transition being kind of hard for me. Some of my closest friendships began to fizzle out at that time and a few had gone to different high schools so I was once again alone. English was still my best subject in school. I remember this one time I wrote an assignment for creative writing and it was so good apparently that my teacher sent it into a Canada-wide creative writing competition. I didn't win but my teacher decided to read it out loud in front of a class. I was proud but also kind of embarrassed. After that, a few of the boys in my class began to constantly pick on me. They called me names and made me feel ashamed of my talent. In winter, they chased me down and pelted me with snowballs. No one wanted to be friends with me, and I guess they didn't want to be associated with the smart kid. In ninth grade, things got a lot better. I changed classes and met some new kids and befriended a really nice group of girls and guys who were also good in school. I stayed friends with this group until I graduated high school, and I'm still in contact with a few of them today. I continued my writing and attended an extracurricular creative writing workshop after school, so I met a lot of new kids who shared my hobbies. And my teachers encouraged me to keep writing, so I thought for sure that I was going to be a writer one day. The rest of my high school career was pretty normal, I guess. I had my first serious boyfriend, my first real kiss, all that stuff. By 12th grade though, I was really bored with school and I couldn't wait to get out of there. My worst subject was math and I hated it so much, I started skipping a lot of classes. My relationship with my parents deteriorated because they were worried about my academics. Our relationship hit rock bottom shortly before my graduation and as soon as I graduated high school, I moved out from home. I was the first of my friends to do so and I now lived in a basement apartment that I shared with a much older roommate shortly after turning 18. I supported myself by working two jobs. I had had my first part-time job besides school when I was about 16 at a bistro and then after finishing high school I worked double shifts at two jobs. I would get up and take the bus downtown to my first job at a juice bar and then after working anywhere between 6 to 8 hours there I would take the bus to my second job at a coffee shop. I had my own money, my own apartment and no one to set rules and curfews for me. When I wasn't working, I hung out with my fun and adventurous group of friends and we got out to a lot of crazy stuff. I have so many good memories from that summer. My plan was then to go backpacking around Europe with my best friend Megan. I didn't feel ready to make any decisions about what I wanted to do the rest of my life and I wanted to see the world. I saved up all my money from my various jobs over the years and bought a one-way ticket to London. I stayed with my sister Anna, who was attending college there, and the two of us first toured around Eastern Germany, Poland, and the Czech Republic. It was my first foray into backpacking and I loved it. After the trip with my sister, we returned to London, where my best friend from Vancouver, Megan, flew in to meet me. We were going to spend the next few months backpacking around Europe together, living on the fly and using our rail pass to get around Europe wherever we wanted to go. Our first stop was Scotland and we visited the Highlands in the Isle of Skye which was really beautiful but also super expensive for us. Since we didn't have a lot of money, we ended up cutting our trip short and headed to southern Europe because it was so much cheaper. The next few months we backpacked around France, Holland, Spain and Portugal and had a blast. We traveled on a shoestring budget, stayed in large dorms and youth hostels had absolutely no luxuries. 
We loved it. We saw so many beautiful places, spent our days sightseeing, and our nights drinking cheap Spanish wine and meeting cool new people. So after about four months of traveling around Europe with Megan, money was running out. My friend returned home to Canada, but I decided to stay in Europe until I figured out what I wanted to do with my life. I decided to try to find work in Switzerland because I had the Swiss passport passed down from my mom so I could legally work there without having to apply for a visa. I made a few pit stops in Austria and Italy on the way back and finally arrived in Switzerland sometime in November. I stayed at my grandparents' house from my mom's side and looked for a job. Even though it was late in the season, I managed to snag a job waitressing at a nice hotel restaurant in a winter ski resort called Adelboden. I was now 18, had a full-time job in a foreign country, lived on my own, and didn't know a soul in this town. I loved it. I was so excited to start this new adventure. First night there was a staff party for all the hotel employees and I spied this cute guy who was also working at the hotel. He had beautiful blue eyes, light hair and was really tall. We ended up talking and I found out he liked the same music as me and he also loved to snowboard. He was Swiss and his name was Bjorn. Well as luck would have it, Bjorn liked me too and we started to date. After a while those feelings deepened and we fell in love. That winter season, my life consisted of working, hanging out with my new boyfriend, skiing, and partying. Since things were going so well in Switzerland, I decided to stick around and work the summer of season two, but at a different hotel where I was much happier. Bjorn and I moved in together to a tiny one-room studio apartment. It was so basic, we didn't even have a phone. But we didn't care, we were happy. Well, I was saving up all my money again, not spending much at all, living with only the bare necessities. I was getting the traveling itch again, and my dream was to backpack through Asia. I wanted Bjorn to come, but he couldn't due to his school, so I made a big decision to go on my own. I just knew I didn't want to be a waitress for the rest of my life, and I just felt too young to give my dreams for anyone. I made the hard decision to leave Bjorn to go traveling to Asia. I had never meant to stay in Switzerland permanently, but it was still so hard to say goodbye and, well, we both cried a lot. I flew to Turkey in October of that year with my entire life savings that I earned during my two seasons working in the hotel industry in this resort town. So it was with this money that I financed my year-long backpacking trip through Asia. I was 19, single once again, and about to embark on a long journey by myself across Asia. My adventure began in Istanbul and I would spend the next year traveling across the entire continent. I saw Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Thailand and Myanmar. It was the adventure of a lifetime. Now obviously such a long trip will change anyone and I definitely did so much growing up during this time. I met so many interesting memorable people and made memories that I'm sure I'll be telling my grandchildren one day. I learned a lot about the world other people, and also about myself. I became a strong individual who relies on herself and knows how to get herself out of a tough spot. Well, this could be a whole video in itself, and it is. So if you want to know all about my trip to Asia, I would recommend you check out my video that I did about it. It has lots of pictures too, so I will link it right now, and it'll open up in a window so you can watch it later. During this journey, I kept a diary and recorded my life and experiences. These are some of my most valued treasures today. I also realized at this point that I wanted my later career to be something in this field. I wanted to be a journalist or a foreign reporter or something along that line. I decided to apply to universities in Canada while I was on my trip. So there I was, sitting in some coffee shop in the middle of nowhere in India, filling out college applications. Well, some weeks later, I got an email from parents telling me that they had received a letter that I had been accepted to McGill University in Montreal. I was floored. It had been my number one choice, and it's one of the best schools in Canada. So, of course, I never thought I would actually get in. 
but somehow I did and I was so excited to begin a new chapter of my life once I returned home. I returned to Vancouver, thin as a wire from my long journey, overjoyed to see my family again and hopeful about the future. I started university and began studying in the liberal arts field. I took a lot of classes that somehow connected me to broader world issues. Economics, political science, sociology, world religion and such. After the first year, I decided to double major in political science and international development studies. I once again excelled at school and got awesome grades. My ex-boyfriend Bjorn and I got back in contact at this time. We had both moved on and were dating other people, but we would talk every once in a while on the phone. Somehow I felt a connection and so did he, so I invited him to come visit me and my family at Christmas break in Vancouver. He accepted and while well, we saw each other again, it was as if no time had passed at all between us. Even though we'd both grown and changed as people, our love for each other resurfaced. At the end of those two wonderful weeks, we decided to give another shot and try a long distance relationship. So I returned to university in Montreal and he flew back to Switzerland where he was also going to school. For the next couple years, we only saw each other at Christmas time and during the long summer semester breaks. He was going to school full time and in the summers I lived with him in Switzerland and worked different jobs before I had to fly back to Montreal. During the rest of the year we kept in touch by phone or MSN chats, but it was really, really hard. We missed each other a lot and I often felt sad that he wasn't there. It was my fourth year of university when things took a turn for the worse. I felt really lonely. A lot of my closest friends that I had gained over the past years had graduated and moved away and I just felt adrift. I felt torn between two places, one life here in Montreal, the other part of my life was in Switzerland. I became disillusioned with my program and I was worried about the future. Where would I live? Where would I work? I had no one to talk to. My support net was far away. I fell into a deep, crippling depression. I was too ashamed to seek out counseling or professional help. I withdrew completely into myself. I couldn't concentrate on anything and my once excellent GPA took a nosedive. I began to take sleeping pills and dropped out from all my extracurricular activities and distanced myself from everyone. It was probably the worst period of my entire life and it went on for a really long time. out with school I decided to leave Montreal. I just didn't want to be torn between two places anymore so I decided to move to Switzerland for good. Bjorn had also finished up his school and we moved into a new apartment together. I still felt depressed but the changes definitely helped. I found a great job in a field that I thought was going to offer me a lot of chances to advance my career. I worked in the area of international relations. After about a year at my new job, the routine of everyday life set in. After my crazy and ever-changing lifestyle over the past few years, I was just bored with the monotony. I had gained an interest in makeup during my university years and while I saw it as my only creative outlet, I always loved to paint in my youth and makeup was like painting on your face. I began to watch a few makeup videos on YouTube and thought, wow, well that looks like fun. I want to do that too, so I uploaded my first makeup tutorial in 2008. I got a few dozen comments on it and a few people actually subscribed to my channel, so I decided to make more videos. Now I was still working full time at my job and doing YouTube in my free time as my hobby. I hadn't met that many people yet in Switzerland, so it was a great way for me to connect with other people who shared my interests. First I didn't tell anyone what I was doing, I was kind of embarrassed about it actually. But then I began to tell my friends and my family and they were all really interested so they checked out my videos. And they encouraged me to keep going and I loved doing it so I did. I gained more and more subscribers and my channel started getting successful. Then I began to be invited to all these beauty and fashion events, so I got to travel and I even started doing meetups to meet some of my viewers. It was so exciting. 
I began to focus more of my time on YouTube because I knew this is actually what I wanted to do. This was me. This is what made me actually happy. I don't know where I'll end up in the future, if my career will remain in the beauty industry or maybe back to political science or maybe even back to writing. I think only time will tell. All my family and friends are incredibly supportive and while well, many of them pass on my work to others by word of mouth. It makes me both proud but also humble to think of all the opportunities I've had because of my work here on YouTube and my blog, all the doors it's opened, all the media attention I've received. And for that, and of course for your ongoing support, I am truly, truly deeply thankful. I never imagined my life to take on any of the paths that it did. Bjorn and I are still together and we recently moved into a great new apartment which I am enjoying immensely. We live in a beautiful country and in the winter we go snowboarding and skiing in the Alps. In the summer we have clean rivers and lakes nearby to swim in, lush forests for hiking and biking and we've built up a really great group of friends who we'd love to spend time with. One thing that still sucks is that my family is so far away and I don't see them as often as I'd like. And well, I miss them a lot, but my parents and I were able to resolve our differences from my teenage youth and we have a really good relationship again. If there's anything you take with you from this video, then let it be that you are the key to your own happiness and success. Don't ever let anyone or anything stop you from pursuing your dreams and dream your dreams big. Think of what kind of person you want to be. What kind of life do you wish to have? Do whatever makes you happy and don't pursue someone else's dreams for you to make them happy. And then go out there and get it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.